This video is a basic introduction to the concept of arrays and some basic syntax that you would use with arrays for JavaScript. So I have here on the left a uh, simple JavaScript file just declaring a variable called characters and then a couple of open and closed square brackets. Now this is how you create an empty array. So what is an array? An array, simply put, is a list. It's a numbered list of items. So if I wanted to add things to my list, let's say I'm going to take a bunch of names. Let's put uh, Luke, Leah, Han, and Chewy. There we go. I have four names in my array. So I have a list of four names. Now I can put anything I want in this list. I can put numbers, I can put booleans, I can put pieces of HTML, I can put anything at all that you'd want to put in your list. Now the term characters is a label for that entire list. So let's try this out. I'm going to console log characters. That's my variable. So if I save that, I come over here and I'm going to run this file. There we go. So it wrote out the whole array. If you want to know how many things are in your list, if you want to know how many things are in your array, there is a property called length. Every array has this property. So if I run that again, there we go. You can see the length is four. Now each of the individual pieces inside the array, each of the items inside of our list, is assigned a number starting at this end 0 1 2 3 those would be the numbers if I wanted to write out one of the individual items from my array I'd write it like this I'd put the square brackets after the name and then pick the number that I want to display so 0 that's going to be Luke run it again and there we are, Luke. So these square brackets refer to the index of the item. If I pick number three, run this again, Chewy, that's the one we get. Now one thing to take note of, which will become important to us later on, is that the index of the last item in any array is always going to be one less than the length. So if I were to take this right here and put it inside, that's going to be invalid because that's going to be the number four. That's going to fail on us. We don't have an item number four. See, undefined. There is nothing in position number four. But if I take the length minus one and I run that, there we go. Chewy, which is the last item in the array. All right, one other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about here is how to add and remove items from an array. Very important thing. There's a couple of ways that we can re remove, a couple of ways that we can add items into an array. So let's say that we want to add a couple more characters first. We're going to add Anakin and we're going to add Obi-Wan. So we're going to push. This is the method that we're calling. Push is going to add Anakin into our list. Then push is going to add Obi-Wan into our list. But where is it going to add the items? If you look at the array, the way we initially declared it, Luke was the first thing. He's item 0, then 1, then 2, then 3. If you think of an array as a stack of, say, blocks, Lego blocks, the one on the bottom being number zero, the one on the top being length minus one, whenever you push a new item onto your array, it's like you're sticking a new block on the top of that stack. So Anakin is going to become number four, Obi-Wan is going to become number five. So let's run that one more time here. There we are. Luke, Leah, Han, Chewie, Anakin was added first, and then Obi-Wan. So push 
is how we add things into this list. If you want to remove things from the top of the stack, we're going to call pop. Now we don't have to say which number or which name we're removing. Pop is just always going to add the very, or sorry, remove the very top item from your stack, the very last item inside your array. So let's clear this and do this again from the top. There we are. I called pop twice. It removed the last two things. The first one would have removed Ant Obi-Wan. The next one, line 11, would have removed Anakin. If you want to add items on the other end, the commands are shift and unshift. Shift off, unshift on. So characters.unshift, we want to add. So basically, we're picking up the stack and we're sticking something on the bottom. That's what unshift does. So let's put in uh, C3PO. And then we'll add R2D2. Run this again. Okay. R2D2, C3PO. R2D2 is the first because it was the last one that we unshifted. So we picked up the stack, we added C3PO, so C3PO was added in front of Luke, and then we picked it up again and we added R2D2 in top, um, in before that. So our last one is the shift and shift will remove the first item. This will remove the very first item, the element zero from your array. And there we are, we're at the bottom here. We're back to our original list. So with shift and with pop, we don't have to specify the number, we don't have to specify the name, because it's always either the top or the bottom of our stack that we're removing. What it will do, however, is this will actually return to us the item that was removed. So if I was to add a console.log around this, what I'm going to be doing is the first thing that was removed. So R2D2, that was at the bottom of the stack. So I'm calling this command, I'm removing R2D2 from the list, but calling this method is going to pass back to me that value, that item. So now if I run this again, R2D2 was there and has been removed. And that's the basics of working with an array. Oh, sorry, the shift did not show up in the console.log, so I'm going to do this. There we are. So console.log did not show that for us. There we go. There's the R2D2. So characters.shift took that and put it into this variable and then we were able to console log that out. So R2D2 was the first one was removed, then we removed C3PO, and then we're back to our original array. And that's it. That's the basics of working with an array in JavaScript. So an array is just simply a list. The items are numbered. We can use those numbers, or we can use an expression like this to calculate the number. Or we can have a variable, and we can put the variable inside there. If the variable had a number, we can stick it inside there. If we're referring to, when we first check this with characters.length, if the number doesn't exist in the array, we will get back undefined as our possible value. 